This collection of toys belongs to my son. And he plays with them and enjoys them all. But this is his favorite toy. This stick, which he can use as a sword, or as a cricket bat, or as a gun, or as a flag, or as a spear, or even, would you believe it, as a horse. Children have a very active imagination, and they do not necessarily need expensive toys to keep themselves entertained. Toys are vital for the development of children. They first explore and experience the world with them. Many of their perceptions are linked with the color, shape, sound, and texture of playthings. Children create a joyous world of fantasy with toys, and through them, journey back and forth between two worlds, the real and the imaginary. Fantasy triggers creativity, creativity of words and actions, of situations and characters, creations of machines, of buildings, of earth and sky. When creativity is nurtured carefully, the child can grow into a poet or an artist, a musician or an actor, a scientist or an engineer, a fashion designer or an architect. Rabindranath Tagore had said, the more incomplete and unstructured the toy, the more joy children derive whilst playing with it. India has had such a tradition. The toys made by artisans are unsophisticated and simple. They created these toys unwittingly, involving scientific principles. All this is made by people who have never gone to school, who have never formally been introduced to the concept of physics. And more important than that really is that how the craftsmen have been able to achieve this with the minimum of material, with the minimum of construction, so that it's available to a child at really no cost. Traditional toy maker was somebody who worked with the elements and worked with his hands, and it was a, it was, it was a creative process for the traditional toy maker. But the modern toy industry copies the toys of other cultures and floods them in our market. Few people realize that the costly war toys, the tanks and the guns, which have become a status symbol, promote violent instincts in a child. For this reason, Sweden has banned the manufacture and import of war toys. But there are those who argue the other way. Sometimes I wonder if, if you give a child uh, toy guns to play with, perhaps they'll just uh, play with them and get it out of the system. And by the time they grow up, maybe they just won't want to know it anymore. But uh, I'm not entirely convinced whether it really works. And then there are toys which develop logic, reasoning, and a scientific temper. But these are not as easily available. The basic idea is the child should be able to open all those toys understand it and make prototypes out of the raw materials available around him. All the parts of the uh, telescope are fully dissectable. You can take all the parts separate and reassemble them one after another and make a full-fledged telescope. Children love to dismantle and create toys on their own. And just hold one finger, one finger, one finger, one finger, one finger, Well, if children make toys like this with scrap material lying around them, well then, even if they break them, there is no one who's going to chide them for breaking it. And no matter how crude the toy is, but if the child has made the toy herself or himself, it's a product of her own creativity. And it means much more to a child as compared to a much more expensive bought out toy. Because this is something which they can, if something goes wrong with it, they can repair it, they can remake it.
Therefore, let's not fool around with toys. No matter how many toys a child has, its desire to make something itself remains. It's because making toys satisfies their inherent creativeness. As the child plays, it invents and explores. In fact, I've heard it said that the best thing a child can do with a toy is to break it, hopefully while trying to discover what's inside. But hold it. Don't try to discover what's inside your TV sets, because Turning Point will be back next month, same day, same time. Till then, goodbye.